Okay. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you very much to Claude and, and Conchita for inviting me to be here today. So what I'm going to be talking about is uh, a project that we are initiating in my group here in Kentucky, looking at the potential effect that DNA methylation has on the ability of plants to assemble microbial communities. So as you have probably heard already, we are facing a climatic challenge. And this is going to be a challenge not only for wild populations, but it's also going to be a challenge for, for humans, and in particular for agriculture. As an example, it is predicted that uh, up to 81% of the current uh, acreage of uh, grapevines in the US might be lost uh, in the next 50 years due to increasing temperatures. So this is a, makes it very clear that we need to breed more resilient crops that are capable of producing good yields in the predicted conditions. So normally, uh, traditional breeding programs have focused on the variability within the plant genome in order to introduce novel traits into crops. But the reality is that plants uh, do not live in isolation. They live uh, associated to a myriad of uh, microorganisms that we call the plant microbiota. And it's the, the association between the plant and its microbiota that we call the holobiont. And what we are starting to see is that uh, the holobiont could be a breeding target. So we can not only, uh, or future breeding programs should focus on, on the holobiont as a target instead of just focusing on the plant genome. So why, why do we have to focus on, on not only the plant, but also its associated microbiota? Well, we know that uh, microbial communities help plants to grow. Uh, they, they enhance growth by allowing uh, plants to get better access to water and nutrients. It also uh, improves the resilience of plants and, and therefore also crops to environmental insult, both biotic and, and abiotic. And uh, uh, also increase uh, re reproductive success of, of plants. And this is very important for crops because uh, uh, in crops that we grow uh, in order to get seeds or fruits, uh, a higher reproduct reproductive success leads to a higher yield. And also uh, uh, the association or the way plants associate with, uh, with microbes can affect the quality of the, uh, of the harvest. Or even as we've shown, uh, the way plants associate with microbiomes can affect the, the quality of uh, later products like wines. So, as I mentioned, uh, what I think we should be focusing on is uh, on targeting the holobiont as a, as a unit for breeding. So is, is this even possible? Well, we know that plants are capable of modifying the soil microbiome, and they do that by exudating metabolites into the rhizosphere, and these metabolites introduce a selective pressure uh, that makes the soil communities less diverse as they approach the rhizosphere. We also know that this selective pressure is not random. Plants try to attract beneficial microbes while at the same time repel pathogenic ones. And we know that uh, uh, crop domestication and selection has affected the ability of uh, plants to assemble soil microbiomes. And, and we can see that different genotypes of uh, plants that are extremely related uh, present different uh, rhizosphere communities. What is not being that clear until recently is whether epigenetic mechanisms uh, do play a part uh, in this association or in these communications. But we know now that uh, epigenetic mechanisms in general and DNA methylation in particular play a really important part in the communication between uh, the host and their associated microbiota. So what I propose is that we can use uh, epigenetic vari variation or variability, both uh, natural or, uh, or externally induced, 
in order to identify genes that are controlling the, assembling, the assembly of microbial communities in crops. So in order to test this, uh, we, a couple of years ago, we started a small pilot study where we treated um, and well germinated uh, soybean seeds uh, under a uh, treatment with 5 acetidin For those of you who are not familiar with 5 acetidin this is a demethylated, uh, demethylated agent. That means that uh, plants or organisms exposed to this chemical tend to pre uh, present lower levels of DNA methylation. And the reason for that is that 5 acetidin blocks the activity of DNA methyl transferases that are the enzymes in charge of introducing and maintaining DNA methylation. So um, once we germinated the, uh, the seeds uh, in, in, in five fats acetylene, uh, the plantlets were uh, randomly distributed in uh, using a, a, a five plot uh, experimental design. And in, in each plot, we introduce uh, control pots. And these control pots, we call them native soil and they didn't contain any plant. So this was, this was pot, these were pots that were uh, irrigated, fertilized, and maintained under the same conditions as the rest of the, plot, the, of the pots, but they didn't contain any plant at all. So we phenotyped this uh, population, uh, around 85 traits, uh, and um, when plants reach uh, the fruiting stage, we collected leaves and soil for further analysis. So at this point, we had a soil a containing this native soil microbiome. We had soil containing a, the microbiome of epi wild type plants. And we also have the a soil containing the microbiome of epi mutant plants. So the first thing that we did, obviously, was to make sure that our 5 acetidin treatment work, uh, and we measure uh, DNA methylation level, or global DNA methylation levels, using an ELISA kit. And as you can see, uh, as we increase the concentration of the chemical, we observe a lower level of uh, global DNA methylation, as you would expect. So what we hypothesize is that there are uh, a decrease in DNA methylation will affect the ability of the plant to alter the soil microbiome. And that therefore, if, this, if these changes are random in each plant, each plant will contain a unique methylome that will lead to the creation of a unique microbiome. The next thing that we did was to, uh, we know that plants um, uh, alter, one of the ways that plants alter the soil microbiome is by exudating metabolites into, into the soil. So we measure, uh, we did an analysis on the, on the metabolite profiles of the different types of samples that we had. And what we observed the first thing was that while the soil from wild type plants and the native soil, those, that soil that was maintained at the same condition as, the, as soil containing a plant, were significantly different, as you can see here. But not only that, we also observed that the profiles of the demethylated plants grouped as um, depending on their methylation level or the treatment uh, or the concentration of asaxitidine. So again, suggesting that maybe a, a demethylated plant not only uh, could alter the microbiome, but it, and that could be happening through a, a loss of the ability of the plant to alter the metabolite profile of the soil. Okay, so next we use uh, 16S sequencing in order to uh, characterize the microbial community of the rhizosphere of our samples. And uh, uh, this is uh, just uh, a, a general overview of our results. So we use, uh, a, a, or we created a Bright Curtis dissimilarity matrix in order to calculate 
what is the, the difference in beta diversity between a, every na a native soil sample and every soil sample containing a plant. So that's, that's the measurement that we're taking here. When we plot these differences, the first uh, difference that we, we measure is differences between control pots, between native soils, and there is very little, very little difference. But then we compare native soil samples against samples with a wild type plant. And we observe uh, an increase in the distance between those two types of soils. And this distance is what we call the ability of the plant to alter the soil microbiome. So then we did the same measurement, but for different uh, the different treatments with 5 acetylene and what we observed was that the higher the, uh, the, the treatment or the concentration of the chemical, the lower of the, the ability of the plant to alter the soil microbiome. So that, that was really exciting results. We, we thought that the, although there is very low resolution at this level, we think that there might be a correlation between uh, the global DNA methylation status of a plant and its ability to alter the soil microbiome. What we did to test this was to do a correlation, a person correlation analysis between the distance uh, between uh, this ability of the plant to alter the soil microbiome and its uh, difference in DNA methylation with control plants. And what we found was that uh, this correlation was highly significant. So, we, this shows that, uh, as I was saying before, that there is uh, an, uh, that DNA methylation might be playing a role in in the ability of plants to as assemble uh, microbiomes, at least uh, in the soil. And then we wanted to see where what were those species that were changing under the influence of a wild type plant or an epimutant plant. So here there is a summary. Uh, of, uh, of that. So on the top panel, we've got species that were either in their abundance was increased by the presence of, of a wild type plant or their abundance was reduced by the presence of a, a wild type plant. So as you can see, the number of uh, species um, that plants are able to alter um, in the soil microbiome is around 300 species. This is a wild type plant. On the lower panel, you can see that the number of species um, or ASVs really that are an epimutant plant or the epimutant population is capable of altering is significantly lower. Not only the number of species, but also the number of families that group uh, that, those species. So then we try and identify of all these ASVs that we could um, that we sequenced and that were significantly different between a, con a native soil and a soil containing a plant, how many of those we can put a, a, a species name? So we look into that. And here what you've got, uh, in the center you've got the family of uh, uh, genus and species of bacterials, uh, bacterial species that are significantly uh, increase or decrease by the presence uh, of, uh, of a plant. So on the left column, you've got those uh, default change in uh, on that specific, specific species abundance uh, induced by a wild type plant. So we can see in orange that there's a number of uh, species that uh, their abundance is decreased and there is a, a, a higher number of species which uh, their abundance is increased in by wild type plants. On the right, right column, what you have is those species um, that whether they, they were in, uh, increased, their abundance was increased or reduced by the epimutant population plants. And then by NC, what I mean here is that there is no change in abundance for those species. So in green in the middle, what we have are the species that are 
change by both wild type plants and epimutant plants. So we plot uh, their fold change. And what we can see is that if a, if a species is changed both by a wild type and an epimutant plant, they, that change happens in a very similar manner. So there is a, a significant a high correlation between the ability of a plant to uh, epimutant or wild type to change um, as the abundance of a given species. But there are certain species that that's not the case. So what was really interesting is that if we focus on uh, this species that are increased by the presence of a wild type plant. These are a bacterial species that we know are beneficial uh, for plants. So plants are trying to increase the abundance of these, these species. However, epimutant plants uh, um, as a population lost the ability of increasing the abundance uh, of those beneficial bacteria. On the, other, on the other end, we also found a group of uh, uh, species that wild type plants repress, so their abundance was uh, lower in the soil with a, um, with a wild type plant than in the native soil. But again, epimutant plants as a population were not capable of changing the abundance of those species. So as a summary, uh, our results indicate that DNA methylation is associated to the ability of plants to alter the soil, the soil microbiome. Um, we also see that the DNA methylation is associated to the plant ability to block the growth of pathogens. And if you, if you alter the uh, methylome of the plant, this ability, ability is reduced. The opposite happens with uh, certain beneficial bacteria. And we also have seen both at a phenotypic uh, level and at the um, epigenetic level that these DNA methylation changes seem to be random. So this, that is, this is a, a problem in itself because uh, although this comes to our advantage or will come to our advantage in the future in order to identify genes or epi alleles associated to microbiome assembly, when if this is true, when we treat our um, embryos inside a seed, the embryos are already um, multicellular organisms. That means that every cell uh, after the treatment is going to contain a slightly different methylone. Uh, uh, and that will lead to the production of epimutant chimeric plants. Another problem with treating plants this way in order to alter the soil micro uh, alter their methylome is that we're not sure whether the effects that we're observing are due to the toxicity of the product or really to a, deme a demethylation effect of the product. So in order to overcome this problem, what we did was to uh, self our plants and generate an epimutant uh, population of plants, an epimutant one, that is gonna come, each individual plant is gonna come from a single fertilization event. Therefore, we at least partially should be getting rid of the chimerism at an epigenetic level uh, from change, well, differences induced by the, by the chemical. And also these plants have never been exposed directly to phyphosacitidine. So they should not be affected by their cytotoxic effect. So where we are now is uh, we're repeating uh, this experiment. We're growing this epimutant population. Um, and we have increased the number of uh, native soil pots to have a, a better resolution or a better view of what is the, the native uh, uh, population of, of microbes. And what we, we also checked whether DNA methylation, demethylation was inherited. And we observed that uh, uh, in general, the epimutant population shows lower levels of DNA methylation than the, the wild type. And also we observe that the variability in, if, in phenotype is also inherited. So there is a transmission of the, uh, not only the variability in DNA methylation, but also on, uh, on plant shape and form. 
So what is next? What we're doing now is we're sequencing using 16S and ITS, we're sequencing the bacterial and fungal microbiomes uh, in the soil. Um, we're also sequencing uh, using a reduced representation approach. We're sequencing the methylome of, um, of these plants. Um, our idea is to use an epg approach to integrate the epi alleles induced by the, by the chemical treatment against the differences in microbiome composition in the soil with the idea of trying to identify alleles or epi alleles associated with microbiome traits. And that's where we are at the moment. Um, I just uh, I think my time is over. I'm a little bit over my time. So this is uh, just uh, say, to say thanks to the, uh, the funding agencies that have been helping us with uh, our research. Obviously, say thanks to the team. This is a project that has been led mainly by undergraduate students uh, as they res their research projects. So these are uh, each student uh, is picking a small piece of the project and they're, they're working really hard over six months. So it's, there is a lot of pieces to, to this puzzle that we're putting together. And that's it. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, Thank you Carlos. Carlos. Uh, we, have we have time for one short question. <laughs> yeah. Can we get a microphone, please? Down here, first row. For your talk, uh, do you know if uh, mutants in the DNA methylation machinery have also affected microbiome? If someone has looked at it, maybe in a rapid uh, There is a, there is a, a paper showing that uh, demethylation. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, that there are mutants uh, in arabidopsis affect the, their their ability to alter the soil microbiome. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.